There we go. Good morning. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning to Good Morning Glory. Uh, we are very thankful and grateful again on this Friday morning uh, to join you and to be a part of Ask the Pastor Questions. And we are very grateful for my wife who have started this series of Good Morning Glory to those who are listeners and being a part and followers of uh, her uh, program and that God has given to her. And we are very grateful and blessed for those who are being a part of this uh, celebration. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the first of, of our life, and uh, my, my wife and us. We thank God for you for being a part of this uh, great celebration of the Lord Jesus Christ, this day God has given, uh, and a day that we never seen before, and guess what? A day that we will never see again. And so we have a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be grateful for. Um, we are grateful to come to be able to share on this Friday morning with all the listeners across this uh, nation in our city and other cities uh, who join and follow my wife's uh, program, Good Morning Glory. I think she's doing a fantastic job. Uh, and so I'm very proud of her and proud of you supporting her work and, and uh, her to, uh, ex to uh, ex ex excel as God has given her uh, grace and mercy in her work and she is in endeavoring too. Uh, there are questions. Today is the day that we want to respond to some questions that you may have. Uh, let me share this. I'm Pastor Lee of Guiding Star Baptist Church here in Kansas City. And um, I, I come I, by request of my wife and those who are listeners who are says we well, have a few questions that I don't get a chance to ask. Uh, and we try to ask those to the best of our knowledge and to biblical perspective so that you can have something to lean on and to, and to live with. And so we are very grateful for that. There's a couple of questions that come in, uh, that came in. One of them is, is there a difference between trusting God and believing in God and having faith in God? Uh, I think they all parallel run together. I do believe that, that we trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding. Uh, but in all that ways, acknowledge Him and He shall uh, direct that path. So you're talking about, when you talk about trusting God and you're talking about uh, depending on God and leaning on God, I think every Christian, every Christian ought to be able to trust God and and not depend on their own thoughts and and feel what is what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and how to trust the Lord. Uh, let me just give you a few things that uh, I like for you to consider in your writings. Uh, there are something that I want to share that I have before me. I'm going to pull this up here and put it in front of me. So when I walk through it. I want to give you something about uh, trusting in the Lord. Number one, look what Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3 uh, is one of our key areas of leaning towards this, the third chapter of the book of Proverbs. Um, when you talk about trusting and, and believing and having faith, I think trusting in God and believing in God is, is, is definitely parallel run together. You have to be able to believe in God first in order to trust God. And I think that's very important to accept Christ, that means without a shadow of a doubt, that you know without, in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul, that you love God and you and God are one. Second part is when you love someone like that, then you trust them for what they are. One thing you find out about trusting God is that you always discover God has never broken his promise. God will never break his promise. Man break theirs, but God will never break his promise couple of things I want to give you. There are seven things I'd like for you to consider. And my wife going to add those to our video as we are speaking now. Number one, uh, number one is don't depend on you. That's the first thing I want to share with you. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out to your own understanding. First thing, don't depend on you. So write these things down. Um, and so in your heart, on your tablet, in your notes, that's the first thing I would suggest to you on your daily, follow these seven daily steps to make sure you're leaning on God. Number one, don't depend on you. All right, you got that one down? Um, here's another scripture to support that. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depths of riches of the wisdom of the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgment and his path become our, 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 tra our tra trace out. So Romans chapter 11 verse 33. I'd like for you to read that in that same one. Second thing I want to share with you that you ought to do in your seven days. Cry out to the Lord to understanding. Uh, number two, cry out to God. Okay. All right. 
the first one to set the following seven steps of becoming a uh, following seven st daily steps to make sure you're leaning on God. Number one, again, depend don't depend on you. Number two, cry out to God. Okay, that's in Proverbs uh, three and six. In all that ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. All right. The third one we recommend to you to follow your daily steps is run from evil. Okay. Run from evil. And you'll find that Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Don't, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Okay? Run from evil. We recommend that. That's number 3. 3 out of 7. Run from evil. Proverbs 3 and 7. Uh, the, second, the fourth thing I want to give you is also to put, your, to, to, put, to, to put God first in your life. Excuse me. To put God first in your life. That's imperative. Important that you do that. Put God first in your life. Someone say that with me. To put God what now? Right. First in your life. And that's Proverbs uh, 3, 9, and 10. Here is this what it says. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your fr first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns shall be filled and overflow and your vests in brim over." Over with new wine, okay? Proverbs 3 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Oops, I lost my page here. One second, please. All right. And then not only should you, not only should you, uh, um, then also not only should you put God first. Number five is check yourself with God's word. Check yourself with God's word, okay? Check yourself with God's word. I'm going to share that with you so you can see uh, and that's uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 11. Proverbs 3 and verse 11. And also Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. Excuse me, verse 9. All right. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 11 goes with that. And that is check yourself by uh, God's word. It would mean make sure you are verified. My son, do not spite the Lord, the, um, discipline, and do not resist resent his rebuke okay all right um, there is Proverbs 3 and 11 then number six is listen to the Holy Spirit okay listen listen to the Holy Spirit and that's number six uh, to listen to the Holy Spirit you want to make sure you listen to the Holy Spirit Jerem uh, St. John chapter 14 verse 26 okay St. John chapter 14 and verse 46 and then 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 14. And then number 7, uh, rest in God's love. You got to learn how to do that. And that's Proverbs 3 and 12. Rest in God's love. Okay, learn how to rest in God's love. So that, that ought to help you in understanding that there's a difference between trusting God and believing in God. So I gave you 7 steps, I think, and I'd like for you to begin. To, to consider those in your reading. The first one, again, don't depend on you. Second one, cry out to God. Number three, run from evil. Number four, put God first in your life. Number five, check yourself by God's word. Number, then number six, listen to the Holy Spirit. And then number seven, rest in God's love. All right? So those are seven things I suggest that you do on a daily basis to help you understand the difference between trusting and believing and having faith with God. All right. I pray that that was a blessing to you as well. Well, let's look at the next question that we have here. Let me see. How do I overcome guilt? Uh, how do I overcome guilt? I've done some things that I'm not proud of. Well, guess what? You are not the only person uh, who have done something that they are not proud of. I think all of us who are listening, all those who are uh, a part of this um, uh, journey that we are on, have done some things that we are not proud of. There's a process that you're going to have to be able to establish. That I really believe, believe that process is to work on ourselves. Proverbs, uh, Philippians chapter 3. Let's see what the Bible says here. The third chapter of the book of Philippians, if you would grab that, I think that's something very important, chapter 3, um, which is in our Bible and the Word of God as we share the Word of God with you, and that's Philippians chapter 3, 
uh, particular is uh, understanding what the Word of God is saying about chapter 3, about how it's important to forget those things which are uh, breaking us. There are breaking points and share with us and, and we, we fall apart because we are trying to deal with uh, past guilt. Uh, Proverbs chapter 33, brother, it says, this is what it said, first, chapter 3, verse 13. Brother, I count not myself to app apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are before, in order to know how to break yourself from your past and your history of past. You got to know how to let things go. Got to let know how to let those stuff in the behind that hinder you, that hold you up, that held you back, that kept you down, that kept you from moving forward. Let those things go behind you. And that's in Proverbs chapter 13, uh, excuse me, Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 13. And then verse 14 says this, I press, personal. Nobody going to do it for you but yourself. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I got mean that mean I gotta I gotta do something. I gotta do something positive. I gotta do things that's gonna be very helpful for me. Which means I gotta press. Which pressing mean sometimes pressing bring pain. Sometimes pressing takes an effort. But you gotta press. You can't just sit there and wallow in the past, wallow in your and let people let you wallow in it. And sometimes people will engage you. They will talk with you and talk about bring up past and what you have done. I remember when, I remember when. But guess what? All of us have a, a remember when because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It ain't about where you're being, but it's about where you're going. Because if you, if you, if you, if you was only judged by where you're being, none of us would be here. But we thank God that God is a forgiving God and God is a faithful God. And God is a God who don't bring stuff over and over to remind us in our, in our minds and our face and throw it in our face like some may do. But let me trust and may I ask that you do this. Trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. But look towards the hills from which cometh your help. For your help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer that foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. But behold, he that keepeth Israel so keepeth thee as well. God will keep you. God will sustain you. And then God will deal with your life and, 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 and walk you through your steps of your journey. And so I recommend you read that for... A area of dealing with uh, uh, um, uh, uh, trusting in the Lord and, and going through and taking care of what God has for you. Then the final piece, and I think someone talked about, um, I dealt with a situation where a good friend double-crossed me. And that's talking about someone taking advantage of you. Know, uh, I think a lot of times we get caught up in how to deal with revenge and how do we deal with the areas that we want to revenge back and get some things back and lead into the revenge area. Revenge is not of God. God don't allow, allow <laughs> want us to take an attitude of revenge. Revenge belongs to the Lord. I mean, it does not. It's not us, but it ought to be God. But look at Romans twelve nineteen. Romans Romans chapter twelve verse nineteen. Beloved, never never avenge yourself, but leave it leave it to the wrath of God. That if you just stop there. Never revenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God. In other words, God will take care of those who take advantage of you. Okay? Don't worry about revenge because two wrongs, that grandma always to say all the time, and I tell my children the same thing, two wrongs don't make it right. There are, there are some attitudes and some dispositions and some ways of others that you cannot change. Only person you can really deal with is really yourself, and that's the that's a job in itself. So learn how to just appreciate what God has done for you. Don't allow what people to drag into revenge, because then you'd be as guilty as them. And sometimes people will try to lure you into revenge. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on what Christ wants you to do. Let's focus on the promise of God. Let's focus on the mission what God has in store for you. And, I, and, and and you got to learn how to separate yourself. When a person do you wrong, you got to know how to separate that. Amen. And don't look at that person as just that, that, to, 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 to destroy you because nothing can destroy you but you and the Lord. Amen. So God, God don't want to see you destroyed. God loves you. God wants you to have the promise and the blessing. And so don't allow yourself to go down that path. 
uh, take the high road. That's what you do. Yeah, take the high road. Two wrongs don't make a right. If someone do your wrong, walk away. If someone talks about you, don't talk about them. If someone speaks to you incorrectly, don't speak about them incorrectly. Okay? Forgive your brother. Forgive your sister. How many times? Read the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in, 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 in debating and trying to get revenge. Oh, I'm going to get them back. No, that ain't what God wants you to do. God wants you to be blessed. Sometimes God can take your enemies. And make God and God will God will use them in the point to try your faith, to test you, to see where you are. And but now also God will allow you to be your the enemies be your footstool. So don't try to walk over people or push people down or try to get back with people. Uh, jealousy um, makes a man furious, um, and then he will he will spare to take his revenge. Okay, jealousies create that. Look at Proverbs six and thirty four. Uh, uh, Proverbs six and thirty four. Uh, and then also retaliation for revenge. And then look at Ezekiel chapter 25, uh, verse 15 and verse 16. Uh, so yeah, look at those kind of scriptures and support you for that area. Um, again, Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 16 and verse 15 and verse 16. Uh, retaliation for revenge. So you got to look at that part of it. Jealousies can lead to revenge. And that's Proverbs 6 and 34. Okay. So that's a couple of things I want to share with you in that area. And then uh, uh, God, God vindicate his own. Okay, God vindicate his own. And that's Isaiah uh, 54 verse 17. No weapons, no weapons, no weapons that is, that is formed against you. Amen. No weapons. And that's Isaiah 54 and 17. Okay, read that scripture. I want to take that in a cell. And then you should not take uh, 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 advantage of others, okay? Uh, vengeance, as I say, or, 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 or vintage or revenge. Uh, you should not take a, a vintage to towards somebody else. Look at Le Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. That would be a support scripture for that. Uh, and then also, I want to share that with you. And I think it's very important, and it's a good question that you ask. Um, how do I deal with a friend who have double-crossed me? Well, how did Jesus deal with uh, Judas? How did Jesus deal with, with Peter? Uh, for Peter sold Jesus out, uh, denied him, should I say, and Judas sold him out. Um, and so you always have sometimes those who are close to you uh, may say or do something that you may not be pleased with. But remember, is you are a child of God. You are a spokesperson of the Lord. And anytime you are doing God's word, you're going to always have someone who may not always agree with you or may not always uh, um uh, walk with you or speak well of you, but listen two wrongs don't make a right So how to deal with someone who double cross you you got to understand Jesus did not Double cross you. That's the most important thing walk with Jesus walk with him and he will lead you and he will take care of you Again, this is Pastor Lee of the Guiding Star Baptist Church here in Kansas City Again, I'm very thankful for you to join us on this good morning glory I pray that the scriptures we have given to you and uh, my wife is sharing with you has been one of the pieces that have been very helpful for you. Uh, again, uh, how to trust in the Lord. Amen. That, that's a process. That's a daily process of reading God's word and knowing God's word. Second one, how to overcome guilt. And how to overcome guilt is a process of you have to be able to let some things go. Press towards the mark of the high calling, which is Philippians chapter 3. And then also dealing with situation of for someone to double cross you. Remember, you gotta you gotta always know that God will and God will take care of you. And so I wanted very to tell uh, to tell Miss Jesse, thank you for for sharing notes and and being able to bless others and and all of you who are sharing your notes with others. Please share that with somebody else because it's very important. I think it's very important that you will share that with some, with your Facebook friends. Uh, share that with those who are in your community, uh, these scripture, and invite them to join on. Ask them to share the video. You share your video. Share your video with somebody else and share it with your friends. All the friends you have this, this day, share these scriptures and share that with somebody else. You'd be surprised how they may come back and say thank you for sharing that and be a blessing to, to them and be a blessing to someone else. You know, I, I've learned something, that these videos are not just only for us. But the videos and the recording now is by divine providence of the Lord. We have nothing to do with this. But God has a way to shout his message across the country. And I invite you to share that with somebody else. 
I invite you to share the word of God with somebody else. I invite you to invite someone to come to Christ, to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I invite you to be able to be, if you're in Kansas City, come share with us. My wife can really put it on a conference. Um, I know she got, we got a program. We're doing a webinar, I believe it is, next month. I'm not sure of the dates, but uh, if you would uh, plug into her, 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 her Good Morning Glory, I'm sure she would update you. Uh, if you will send a message in or do the questions and find out what day it's going to be, I'm sure she will update with you and the cost of being a part of that. Uh, but we are very thankful. We are very grateful for you and for you, my brothers and sisters, to share with us and to, with us to share with you on this Good Morning Glory. I like it. I'm very thankful. Well, my time is up now. Uh, I try not to stay too long, but I, and I hope that this has been a blessing to you. My wife is here, and so... Uh, she's doing a few house duties and I got to go do the husband duties. You know, I do have uh, 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 to do uh, uh, a, 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 a whole list of stuff to do that she gives me a list. I don't know if I get them all done or not, but uh, and that's the, that's the beauty of uh, the next day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, again, we're very thankful for you for sharing with us on the Good Morning Glory. For me and my wife, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We say we see you later. We'll talk to you, I guess, on Monday morning. My wife will be, and then I will see you on next Friday. Send your questions in. We'll not be able to get to all the questions. Some of them will be had sent to you by respond by via email. But if you're in our city, we invite you to join us at the Guiding Star Baptist Church. And that's 3035 North 27th Street. And we thank God. We'd love to have you there. And me and my wife would love to greet you. If you don't know us, come say hello to us and introduce yourself. And we'd be glad to, to greet you as well. May God bless you. May God keep you. Have a wonderful weekend. And this is Pastor Lee. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.